Hello, I'm well, here at Super Investor US 2013 with Bob Maynard, the Chief Investment Officer of the Idaho Public Employee Retirement System. I uh, wanted to ask him a couple of questions about public pension plans exposure to private equity in general, and then perhaps look more specifically at Idaho's program. So Bob, there's been a massive increase in public programs exposure to private equity from 4% of assets to 10% of assets to 15% of assets over the last decade. What's driven that increase? Uh, two reasons. One is that the funded status of a number of public employee pension funds uh, turned out to be very fragile, uh, primarily because of lack of contributions by the system. Uh, the, the, it hasn't been an investment problem, it was a uh, contribution problem, but nonetheless people found themselves being very underfunded, particularly after the volatility of the um, a huge market drop, not only in 2008, 2009, but 2003. Uh, for those uh, pension funds who found themselves in that situation, they find themselves in a situation where they had to make greater than market returns. And if you're trying to make greater than market returns, beat the market, and still try to avoid volatility, uh, uh, private equity uh, happens to, uh, if you hit it well, happens to uh, provide that. But it's a magic bullet when everyone gets it right. Um, we were talking earlier about David Swenson's book, mm -hmm. Pioneer in Portfolio Management. Right. Um, what do you think the impact of that has been on these uh, allocations to private equity? Uh, for the majority of people, poor. For the winners, very nice. Uh, actually, I think the best uh, book written by Mr. Swenson, Dr. Swenson, uh, was uh, the one he wrote in 2005 called Unconventional Success, where he, where he said that almost all institutional investors and all private investors should stay away from that model. Uh, <laughs> uh, and you should do a 70-30 uh, equity fixed income uh, with six different types of investments. And that has turned out over the last five years, four or five years, uh, to be the best investment approach of all. In fact, it would have been the number one endowment approach. Uh, Swenson beat Swenson over the last three or four years. So, uh, you don't hear so many private equity GPs talking about his second book. No, no. And, and, and in, in defense, I mean, if you do do private equity right, like Washington State Investment Board, it can pay off quite nicely if you have some advantages in the area. But for the vast majority of us, uh, we're paying a game where the odds are two or three to one against us if we have to pick the top quartile. So, Given all of that, Idaho is in a very comfortable, well-funded position. Right. What drives you into private equity up against all these desperate people? Well, we, our allocation or our exposure is about 7.5% of the fund. And we keep it around 7.5 to 9 because it does give good return patterns as long as you can get over rolling five to seven year periods, uh, Russell 3000 or U.S. equity returns. And for us, it has. And so as a result, I mean, we're not looking for home runs out of this. We're looking for just good, solid, public equity market type returns with a different return pattern. And while it may be true that it may be a phony return pattern caused by the smoothing of private equity, it's one our actuaries recognize. And until when the actuaries call it, that's how it is. <laughs> and uh, that, that's what determines our contribution rates and that's what determines the pattern of contribution rates. Well, look, thank you very much for your insight today. Certainly. Thank, thank you very you. much. Always a pleasure. Bye.